possible to shift them into if that happens again. Okay. Or sometimes we just take a short break and do something physical, and I don't have a lot of time, but it can even be like a five minute, teaching my class tomorrow night, some five minute stress relief things. And there's a little just like a five minute movement, move your body, or we've had a lot of rain, we'll just go outside and scream and then come back. Any sort of small shift sometimes can get the attention back. Okay. okay. And that you can do those things. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that's good. One other thing that happened. <laughs> all these things happen on my, on my shift here. Uh, so there was this this toy that this with this one young boy was playing with, and it was had a suction cup in. So it. you you have this going on, but they're allowed to bring things in with them. Well, no, they're really not. No. But the first playing, thing there is, I would so, have said, leave everything in the classroom and just go. Yeah. Yeah. And so he was playing with this toy, and it had a suction cup on the bottom, so it popped up, you know. And so uh, he kept doing it, and it was really distracting. Mm -hmm. And said, and then finally I said, well, you know, you can um, you can put it away, mm -hmm. or you can give it to me, and I'll keep it safe for you until the See, end of the hour. Those are choices. Mm -hmm. And so he said he put it in his pocket. Of course, it came out See, again. I would have I would have been clear on where to put it away. Oh. So you want to put it away, put it away, as in zipped in a backpack. Because oh. if it's somewhere they can get, they're just going to get it again. I see. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's the thing. Like, the longer you do this, the more clear you are in giving the direction on exactly what you want to happen. Okay. So if the toy is a problem here, you want it completely inaccessible. Okay. So it can go back to your classroom, in your backpack, on top of this cupboard. Okay. I'll hold it for you. Okay. okay. Those are the options. All right. The other thing with this age children too, and I know at the beginning of the project, or if it, you could do it now, when they're fourth and fifth graders, I have them create some, we have create some rules together oh. and post them. Children, their research says children buy into limits and rules more if they help construct them. Back to power again, children want to have some power and control. So, you know, uh, toys stay in backpacks or in classrooms, oh, those okay. sorts of things. Um, shovels, knives, any tools that we use for gardening and cooking are just tools and they're just used for those purposes to keep them clean, to keep us safe. Mm -hmm. You have some sort of rules like that. So I wouldn't allow the toys to come in. Okay. Well, I ended up taking it away and put it, I put and it away. And that's why we don't want it to go yeah. that far. Yeah. And, uh, but then another child found it. Of and course. started playing with it, and then they started arguing on <laughs> whose it was. Of course, so you know, that one has got to be really away, and that's going to be hard for you because you're coming into that space. It's not your room. Like, I have four year olds, just put on top of the cabinet, I can't get back. Um, but it was explained to them from the beginning what was going to happen. And that's sort of my last resort is I'm sorry that you chose to continue playing with that. Not get the job. So that's what happens. We let ourselves get too frustrated before we impose the consequence. So if we spell it out ahead of time, and then we just say, you have it out again, hand it to me. Okay. Yeah. Because we don't, we let ourselves get irritated, and we take it from them, and then it's a power struggle. Yeah. Right, and then the idea is, how can we get it back? Can he get it back for me? Right. That kind of thing. Do you have like a place you can actually just put it away? Or would it have fit oh, like, sure. in your pocket or your? Well, I put it in the kitchen. And, but and it was then, out in plain sight, so went someone back, else grabbed it. The next week, I would have said, toys were a problem last time. If you have anything in your pocket, now is the time if you want to keep it. Yeah. To keep it in your pocket, I'm going to put it away now. If it comes out, it's mine until the end of the afternoon. But I won't keep it. I'm not one of those teachers who took your stuff and put it in her drawer and never gave it back to you. Mm -hmm. I don't want it. Right. And I don't want there to be hard feelings. The more resentment, the, the more we have to take it away, the more resentment builds up, and that impedes our relationship, and all the learning happens in a relationship. Mm -hmm. okay? I don't want this toy. I have no interest in it whatsoever, but I'm going to take it because it's preventing us from getting the project finished. Mm -hmm. I'm only taking it for this afternoon. Remind me at the end of the day, because I'm not going to remember the toy. toy's not important to me. Mm -hmm. It's important to you, so remind me before you leave here today, I'll give it back to you. It's that, that mm -hmm. respectful, logical consequence as opposed to a punishment I'm going to take it, you can't have it, I have power over you. It's, a, it's really not contributing to the group here. And, and you have to be, you think of the group and they only think of themselves. Mm -hmm. So when you write rules with children, what's going to make the project work? What's going to keep the group safe? What's going to keep us, you know, working forward? Do we get this finished? We can actually eat it. 
But if I have to keep stopping and talking to people about toys, we're not going to get all this caught up and there's not going to be anything to eat today. I, I call that a sort of preview of coming attractions. Mm -hmm. I'm stopping you now so we can get to this more fun or this better thing. What would you say as far as kids talking when you're trying to explain something or being really chatty? How would you redirect that? Because you're not changing jobs on them because their duty is just to listen. Well, everything isn't redirection, which is why you have all these pages. So guidance is about, like, think of it as a tool belt. You know, all these different, really specific tools. So for different things children are doing, you pull out a different tool. So, um, Probably what I would do is use something, a communication tool we call an iMessage. That's a really sort of sophisticated, hard to learn guidance technique, but we do have it in here toward the back. Um, for me, it's page seven in the middle. 16, bro. 16. Okay, do you see it? iMessages. Not the whole hand out, there's just a little piece here, and then we're going to go to that. Sorry. Oh, it's on six. On six, right here. But I kind of just set this up. This all comes out of the same theory. And so, so this whole thing is called solving problems. This is Thomas Gordon's work. What Thomas Gordon says is when you hear the problem, the first thing you have to do is determine ownership. Who owns the problem? So if you're the one getting interrupted, you own that problem. It's your problem, right? Um, with the child who had the toy, he got to take it away. That was his problem to get it back, which is why he tried to get it back. So if you own the problem of people interrupting you, what he says, again, to keep this positive, is you want to let the child know how their behavior impacts you without blaming them. And it's why he calls this an I message and not a you message. So usually what we do is, you keep interrupting me, you, you, you. And I, I use the finger because that's what people sort of see, even if you don't do that, when they hear you, they feel blamed. You did this, you interrupted me, you got your toy out. So Thomas Gordon says, avoid you and just talk about you on the problem. So you just talk about yourself, your feelings, and how their behaviors impact you. So you use this strategy when you're on the problem to identify your feelings and to tell other people. Then you go to, is it page 17? Is it 16? Uh, okay. I've got 16. Yes. And it's going to say, hi, messages at the top. These are, you'll see there's course numbers on the top. These are handouts from different courses that I teach. So to give a, a good, the briefest way I can explain an iMessage without going through all this, which you can read later, is um, three things. An iMessage has three parts. You can use them in any order. And they're on here, B, E, F. And I put them in that order just because it's a little thing people used to remember them. Where's the beef? Right? It's not B, E, E, F, but it's B, E, F. An effective eye message has behavior, effect, and feeling stated in any order. And I think actually my example is being interrupted because it's perfect. Yes, it is. See where it says example? So it says an eye message has three parts, D, E, F. Then it says example. When children interrupt me when I'm talking, that's the children's behavior, that's the B. I feel frustrated, that's the feeling. Or however you feel. How do you feel when you feel interrupted? Annoyed. I feel annoyed because I have to, now the impact on you, because I have to repeat myself, because I have to start over, because I feel that people can't hear me. So then you can leave the same behavior in there. When people interrupt you, talk, I feel annoyed. Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because what's the direct impact on you, the impact? Because I feel like other people can't hear what I'm trying to explain. Exactly. So your job is to give the directions and other people can't hear. I meant to just take a little work, but I would suggest you practice one before you go in next time. And as long as you avoid you. So it's when people interrupt me, not when you interrupt me. We want that child to save face and preserve their dignity. So you don't want to call them out and embarrass them. That's punishment. That's what behaviorists do. That's not what we do. I just need you to know that listening helps everybody gets the directions. When you stop interrupting and start listening, then we all, it moves faster, you'll be less bored, the directions don't take as long when people aren't stopping me. Is that helpful? Mm -hmm. it, it, it also helps you be honest with the children. It's not that whole teacher's always happy. We're not, we're just people. 
And if we pretend and have that fake voice,